All right. So the talk of the town right now is artificial intelligence. It's literally everywhere. And I held off on making a video uh, because it's a big topic. And I just had to make sure that I was covering everything I wanted to talk about in the best way possible. So first things first, AI is already a thing, even in a slight way, with the emails that you receive, the emails that you write, the text that you write, autocorrect and autofill, that's a form of AI. Hell, I mean, even Siri and Hey Google and Cortana, those are very rudimentary forms of artificial intelligence. So AI is everywhere, we can't stop it, and it's only going to get more advanced. Now, this is mainly an entertainment channel, so let's talk about AI in entertainment. And if we're gonna talk about AI in entertainment, we have to talk about the big giant elephant in the room, uh, the AI Drake song featuring the AI Weekend. The song blew up and record companies have no idea how to combat it. Universal Music Group issued a copyright strike by taking down the song on streaming services. But what exactly are they copywriting? The song is an original work by the person that wrote it, it just used an AI voice of Drake in the weekend. And the final result was honestly fucking fire. <laughs> It's honestly nonsense that they're copywriting it because there are no laws in place right now to regulate this type of stuff. So technically what's going on with AI and music right now is not illegal. We just don't know how to deal with it. And you know what? Maybe that's okay. Look, a couple of video creators that I love to watch every now and then, like The Music Snob and Rick Beato, have made, you know, better videos than this one talking about AI and the way it could change the music landscape. And a few of their ideas are that record companies will make their own AI artists, or AI voices of existing human artists will sort of rent out their voices for other producers and artists. And honestly, I can see the latter happening much sooner than later, even though Universal Music Group recently signed a deal with sound wellness company Endel, which frankly isn't too much to write home about. Endel is a company that focuses on creating AI-driven soundscapes uh, that promote, you know, better wellness, rest, relaxation, sleep. Again, it's nothing to write home about, but if you think that this deal that UMG made with Endel isn't really for them to get their feet wet in the world of AI music, then you're wrong. <laughs> I'm just going to bet on that. Now, as far as labels creating AI artists, I mean, 100%, I'm sure they'll try. And there was an AI rapper not too long ago that was like universally panned and disappeared off the face of the earth. But... You know, don't fear, it will be tried again, and again and again, by someone, something, or some record label. However, Rick Beato and others have said that music is personal, right? That we need that human interaction to relate to, to connect with. And that would be sort of the counter-argument, right, to an AI artist. But here's the thing, an AI artist can give you that. Because who are you connecting with at the end of the day? Even with the human artists that you love. It's really connecting with yourself. That's all you're doing. It's always been truly with yourself. And this message is as old as time. You know, God created us in his own image. You know that thing? The reason we gravitate towards role models, celebrities, is because we either A, see ourselves in that individual, or B, aspire to be like that person, or C, a little bit of both. But at the end of the day, it's just following and falling in obsession with your own reflection or with the ideal of your reflection, right? And an AI artist would be, in a way, too good to be true because it could be that and more. Like, think about this. What if a label creates an AI artist that can connect to your phone and have personal conversations with you, give you intimate concerts? That artist would be tailored to you, even if the music it's putting out is created by the label or engineered artificially even to suit your tastes. I mean, come on, imagine that. Or let's say they create an AI artist that becomes its own person by the experiences it has with every one of us. And this is all digital, mind you. I mean, we're not even talking about androids yet. 
I mean, that's honestly what it would have to be for now, you know, and not Android. You know, AI right now is in its infancy in many ways, but also not because technology does get better exponentially. But AI, you know, whatever it is, you have to feed it information for it to get smarter, right? And you have to give it prompts. And I mean, I guess in the future, uh, even without Androids, you know, I could imagine maybe holograms in a stadium or something like that, but... I don't know, at that point, it'd just be a waste of space. Like, why not have a device that can create the hologram right in your room? But that, again, that, that's future stuff. Here is the thing, though. We all think that AI will destroy human interaction, but that's not necessarily the case. If anything, human or quote-unquote pure interaction rather than digital interaction could very well become a boutique experience, one where services and goods will cost more if it has the human touch. That can always be possible too. And mark my words, once we get to the point where androids exist, where artificial intelligence develops consciousness, along with aliens and the atomic bomb, that will be a historical moment. And I think it very well could become the next civil rights issue. I sound crazy now, and maybe I am, but again, mark my words. And I will end with this. If there's an AI artist, or AI whatever it may be, that can create a better album than Michael Jackson's Thriller, better than The Beatles' Sgt. Pepper's, or better than Dark Side of the Moon by Pink Floyd, think of whatever album, your favorite album, think about this. It'll contain the DNA of all of those albums, just like the albums that came out today by human artists. So if we truly value human experience, or scratch that, experience, and if we value art for art's sake, then we'll listen to that album. And we can enjoy it, or not enjoy it, but what's for sure is that we'll learn from it. We're gonna have to. Because the worst mistake that we can do as a human race is to ignore it. Or worse yet, we start to hate it, actively hate it. Because if there's anything we've learned from history, it's that eventually the oppressed fight back. Take care, stay safe, and until next time, I love you.